is always on the state of refusing any kind of despair, any kind of hopelessness. Since as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there, we have the greatest hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says in the Qudsi hadith, Ana عند ظن عبدي بي سبحانه وتعالى I am at the good thinking of my worshiper so if you think if you are sure that Allah سبحانه وتعالى will forgive you you have this hope definitely Allah سبحانه وتعالى will forgive you and I love always to quote the examples and the stories of our great prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم I want all of you like you are watching the battle right now in front of your eyes. The battle of Al-Ahzab or Confederates or the trenches, right? Muslims are in a very weak situation. Their enemy is fully armed with most advanced weapons at that time. Their number is more than the Muslims. They have all facilities or all means that would give them victory. And Muslims, they had maybe nothing, but they have the most powerful weapon that will make them eligible for victory. That is hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The secret was the word Allahu Akbar. When you think about the meaning of Allahu Akbar, you will realize that one day the victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give power and strength to this ummah. What happened in this battle that Muslims, they were surrounded by all tribes. If you want to see the best description of the battle of Al-Ahzab, go to Surah Al-Ahzab. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there and the situation of Muslims هناك بتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا. There, Muslims they were they were severely tested by Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Like they were shaken. It's a battle that through the strategies or as people in the army think. Muslims had no chance to win. But as I said, always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. The victory is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Nasr, the success is coming from Him. As He says in the Quran in the chapter of Al Hajj, Wala yansun Allah If you give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give it to you. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tansuru Allah yansurkum In the chapter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Oh you have believed if you give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you So in the middle of this very very tough situation And while they were trying to dig the trench It's a means to protect them There was a huge rock that they were unable to break up to break down into small pieces. But at the time of difficulty after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is their source? What is their shelter? It was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Kunna idha shtadda al-watees nahtami bi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. At the time of difficulty, we had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam as our shelter. So they asked for help. They were begging the Prophet ﷺ help. That huge rock, the Prophet ﷺ had something like an axe. For the first time, he struck the rock and he said, Allahu Akbar. Some light spark came out of this rock. And he said, I swear that I see from here the palaces of Persia and the keys of Persia are given to me. What the Prophet ﷺ is seeing, and the Sahaba, they are surrounded, and the Sahaba, they are about to be caught, the Sahaba are going to be killed, as martyrs in a way. But here the Prophet ﷺ is giving them a lesson, and whatever he says ﷺ is true. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ he doesn't speak out of his own. The promises that he is giving to the companions, sooner or later they are going to take place. The second, so part or one third of the rock was broken. Still too big to move it away so can they resume digging. The second time, 
He said, Allahu Akbar. I can see the gates of ancient Syria. I can see the keys. I swear, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I can see Syria from here. The third time, the last part of the rock, he said, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can see the gates of Sana in Yemen. So Yemen, Syria, and the empire of Persia are going to be Muslims one day by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who was giving this glad tidings to the companions? It is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who inspired to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that these good news are going to happen? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The companions had zero doubt about the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam because they are sure that whatever the Prophet is saying is coming true tomorrow after five years, ten years. And if you read history from the time of the Prophet till the time of Umar, more than 15 years, and the promises of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam came true. There is a story of the Sahabi Suraqa ibn Malik. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, they fled Mecca and they were looking for a new place to start their da'wah, to build a new community. On the way there, when Quraysh, the tribe of Quraysh, they heard about the Prophet migration, they decided to get rid of him or to get him and Abu Bakr and they set a huge prize. The prize was hundred camels. A camel in today's price is more than one thousand dollars anyway. So more than hundred thousand dollars a prize for anybody who could get the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Abu Bakr. Suraqa at that time he was like investigating, searching, pursuing all ways and all roads and lanes to try to get the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was very close to them. The first time the front legs of his horse sank into the sand and he fell. And the second time the same thing happened. The third time he saw a wall of dust in front of him. He was very close to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked for permission and asked for protection. Oh Rasulullah, can you give me a promise that you're not going to harm, hurt me? He said, I'm not going to hurt you. But I'll tell you something, Suraqa. How about if you wear the bracelets of Kisra, of Persia, the emperor of Persia, one day you are going to wear the most expensive piece of jewelry of the Emperor of Persia one day. And Suraka was surprised. When this will happen? The Prophet in a very tough situation is leaving Mecca and people of Mecca expelled him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But at the same time, he is giving hope to Suraka ibn Malik and saying to him, one day you will get that. And during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu ardahu, when he had possession of these bracelets, he said, where is Suraqa? Where is he? Come on, Suraqa. Wear the bracelets. Let us make the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming true. So, we as believers, what is our role? Our role is to have full confidence of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The history, if you look at the stories of prophets, all of them, they never lose hope even for a single minute. Yaqub alayhi salam, Jacob, peace be upon him, when he lost his child, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, Yusuf was less than 10 years old when his brothers, they tried to make like a plot against him and they went to their father and they said he was eaten by the wolf and you know the rest of the story, but in all situations, Yaqub alayhi salam, he never lose hope and always he was hoping that one day Yusuf will be returned to him. Ya baniya, idhabu fatahassasu mi Yusuf wa akhihi wa la tayasu min rawhillah innahu la yayasu min rawhillah illa al-qawm al-kafirun. Never lose hope. 
of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, it's only the losers or the disbelievers who lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The amazing verse in the chapter of Zumar where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the transgressors, is talking to the sinners, is talking to those who are committing bad stuff, calling them, Ya ibadiya, you are the elite, you are very near, very close to me. Never lose hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving all sins. As we say always, at the end of the tunnel, there is light. You might fall down for some time. You might fail a project. You might fail a dissertation. God forbid, for example. You might fail a subject. Anything like that. What comes next? Comes next is the success is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Comes next is the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the, 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 the one who invented the bulb or the lamps, Thomas Addison. He tried. How many times? 99 times to create something, to create the lamps that we see right now. And when he was successful, he said, I did not fail 99 times, but I had learned 99 ways to get success. Whatever happens to you, it gives you a kind of power. It gives you a kind of strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's talking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jami'an. حَتَّى إِذَا اسْتَيْأَسَ الرُّسُلُ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ كُذِبُوا جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُونَا When prophets, they feel a kind of desperate. What happens? The nasr, the victory, the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming. At the beginning of the da'wah, and you know what happened to the early Muslims? May Allah be pleased with them all. And again, the Prophet was praying in the middle of the Kaaba. And one of the companions, he went. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ala tastansir lana? Ala tad'u Allah lana? O Messenger of Allah, will you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will give us support? Won't you make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us victory? He said, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he Azza wa Jal will make this religion prevailing, but you are a little bit rush. You want to get the results now. People think that you make the dua right now as you are having stopwatch, and after one minute, the response is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like that. Sometimes it makes time. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that, حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ When they were, they will ask you about when the victory is coming, when the support is coming. It's coming. Very close, but according to the time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not according to our time. Musa alayhi salam, when he made dua against Pharaoh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to him, قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا Your dua has been answered. Don't worry about the time. Don't worry about the situation you have right now. Definitely, surely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a way out. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. Because always, we raise our hands, we say, Ya Rabb. If you have complete confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you. Another example from a lady. May Allah be pleased with her. Lady Hajar. What does he say in, in, the, in, in English? Hagar. Hajar radiallahu anha wa arda'a. Do you believe a woman with a little child in the middle of the desert, they have a small amount of food that would be enough for one day or a couple of days. Nobody else, nothing, no way of communication, no way of support. But the communication is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best and is the strongest. 
and in a very complete confidence and hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she asked Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. And she said to him, Allahu amaraka bihada has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to leave us here. What you are doing now, is it by command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the order of Allah azza wa He said, yes. With all words of confidence, she said, إِذَنْ لَنْ يُضَيِّعَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never let us down. Do you believe in the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, we believe. And we are 100% sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a way out. The one who helped Yunus alayhi salam to get out of the will is going to change your situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he changed things it's not as we do, but his command, as the Quran says, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُمْ فَيَكُونَ The command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change your situation before your eyes blink. The whole world could be changed faster than we imagine because the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is able to do everything and He is able to change your situation as long as you have the thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as long as you are hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qudsi hadith عَبْدِي إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي O oh my worshipper, if you ask me and you have hope in me, I will respond to you. Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. He says, In rahmat Allah ta'ala tatajalla yawm al-qiyamah hatta anna iblisa yadhunna annahu najin annahu fi rahmat Allah ta'ala. The rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming down on the day of judgment. Everybody is hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy. Even Iblis, the leader of the devils at that time, he is hoping to get a share of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He Azza wa Jal says, Qala wa man yaqnatu min rahmati rabbihi illa dhalun. He says, who is the one who will get this prayer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except the one who is misguided, except the one who have gone astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the, 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 the right iman, the right faith that we believe in him and that we are sure inshallah that this religion is prevailing one day. The promise is repeated two times in the chapter of At-Tawbah, Wallahu mutimmu nurihi walau kariha al-kafirun. And in the chapter of As-Saf, Wallahu mutimmu nurihi walau kariha al-mushrikun. The religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prevailing even if the disbelievers do not like that. Have this kind of faith and have this kind of hope. Aqulu qawl hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim wa alaykum. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا نشهد أنه سبحانه وتعالى الملك الحق وأن وعده حق ونشهد بنبوة حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم there are so many ways that you can I mean uh, strengthen the issue of hope number one always try to follow or have friendship with those who always give you positivity with those who are telling you about the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with those who are telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you, will accept your return, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help you. All the time, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is supporting us as long as we are good believers and we believe in the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sahabihi wa sallam about which people you should take as friends. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي Take friendship of those who are calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ 
the good companion, the good friend is leading you to paradise, inshallah. So those who are calling for positivity and doing positive things, and I mean, inspiring other peoples with good ideas, those are the ones that you need to follow. And again, again, this life, to summarize all of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a kind of test. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم Whatever test you are going through, surely there is an end. And surely there is a kind of way out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely the result is coming. As long as you are doing your best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you. Because he says again in the chapter of Al-Kahf, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا as for those who believed and follow their faith with righteous things, their efforts will never go for nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never lets somebody down as long as he is doing his part and as long as he is taking the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم العظيم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا محتاجا إلا أعطيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مكروبا إلا فرجت كربه ولا حاجة من حواج الدنيا ولا آخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم أصلح حال الأمة يا رب العالمين وغير حالها إلى أحسن حال اللهم انصر إخوانا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم اهد ابناءنا وبناتنا اللهم اجعلهم مداة مهديين لا ضالين ولا مضلين اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم انزع الغل والحقد والبغضاء والفرقة من بيننا يا رب العالمين والله يأسكون this day to make this ummah united and to unite all our hearts and to gather all of us on your word and on the word of Tawheed and to make us true followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam to give some support and relief to all our brothers and sisters who are going through some difficulties in every corner of the globe. We ask you to give the best of success to our sons and daughters to guide them and to make them source of guidance for others and to make all of them the coolness of our eyes. We ask you to give us the ability to go back to your book and to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. Oh Allah, give us the ability to be thankful to you, to be grateful to you, to be good worshippers to you. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Aqulu qawl hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim alayhi wa aqam as-salah. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'min yaktaban mawquta aqam as-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله pray with خشوع make dua while you are doing the sujud Try to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray with sincerity. Have the intention that you are praying mainly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him to accept your prayers and the rest of your good deeds. Amen. Allah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ جاءتكم جنود فأرسلنا فأرسلنا عليهم ريحا 
وجنودا لم تروها وكان الله بما تعملون بصيرا إذ جاءكم من فوقكم ومن أسفل منكم وإذ زاغت الأبصار وإذ زاغت الأبصار وبلغت القلوب الحناجر وتظنون بالله يظنون هنالك ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا وإذ قالت طائفة منهم يا أهل يثرب لا مقام لكم فارجعوا ويستأذن فريق منهم النبي يقولون إن بيوتنا عورة وما هي بعورة إن يريدون إلا فرارا الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤيمن العزيز الجبار الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Uh, just a, uh, a quick announcement. Sheikh Mahmoud uh, is joining us from Arkansas, from uh, the Islamic Center of Little Rock, Arkansas, where he has been uh, an imam there for uh, five years now, actually five to six years. He is an imam candidate here at our center. Uh, the Sheikh has uh, quite the impressive credentials. Uh, this includes memorization of the Quran prior to the age of 10. He also completed a Bachelor's of Arts in Islamic Studies and English in Al-Azhar University. He went on to complete a PhD at the University of Durham in the United Kingdom. Uh, the Sheikh has served in many interfaith dialogues at churches, temples, universities. He's also appeared on uh, several Islamic international channels. Uh, so please welcome him to our community. And uh, we will be sending out an online survey sometime this weekend. Please look on. Please be on the lookout for that. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you. Mashallah, we have two brothers that went to. We're just talking about the, the, the faith and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supporting the faith. So the good news, we have two brothers right now. Inshallah, they're going to say the word of shahada. And Okay, Brother Ahmed, can you come? Jazakallah khair. And you repeat it. Ashhadu. 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 Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammad. Muhammad. Rasul. Rasul. Allah. Allah. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And that Muhammad. And that Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. And a slave. And a slave. Of Allah. Is Allah. Of Allah. Of Allah. Takbir. Congratulations, Brother Ahmed. And good. Mashallah. Uh, welcome to our community. And we have new brother and brother Salim. Okay, can you repeat the same thing, please? Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammad. Muhammad. Rasul. Rasul. Allah. Great. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And that Muhammad. And that Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger. And messenger. Messenger. And slave. And slave. Of Allah. Of Allah. Takbir. Congratulations. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala welcome to our community. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala give you all support. And we're so happy to have you guys. Habib. الله أكبر القلوب الطيبة تشابهت القلوب والوجوه الطيبة الله يعزك الله يعزك الله يعزك الله يعزك الله ما شاء الله عليكم الله يحفظكم يا رب ويزيدكم نورا وبهاء طيب حاضر إن شاء الله السلام عليكم الله يبارك فيك يا حبيبي وأذانك جميل ما شاء الله عليك السلام عليكم الله يبارك أهلا دكتورنا الحبيب الله يبارك فيك أهلا يا حبيب أهلا بك أهلا بك يا دكتور الله يعزك يا رب وينفع بكم الإسلام والمسلمين ويجعل في ذا في ميزان حسناتكم يا رب أهلا بك أهلا بك سيد السلام عليكم جزاك الله خير ثانك يو سو ماتش بارك الله فيك السلام عليكم السلام عليكم
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله علانيته وسره لك الحمد يا ربي كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك 
لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أهل الثناء والمجد أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك عبد لك الحمد في الأولين ولك الحمد في الآخرين ولك الحمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا لك شاكرين اللهم اجعلنا لك ذاكرين اللهم اجعلنا لك حامدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير سبحانه سبحانه يعز من يشاء ويذل من يشاء بيده الخير إنه على كل شيء قدير يولج الليل في النهار ويولج النهار في الليل ويخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ويرزق من يشاء بغير حساب ونشهد أن سيدنا ومعلمنا وأستاذنا وقائدنا وهادينا ومخرجنا من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن الله تعالى محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم احشرنا تحت لوائه اللهم اشملنا بشفاعته اللهم أوردنا حوضه اللهم اسقنا بيده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظم بعدها أبدا نشهد يا سيدي يا رسول الله أنك بلغت الرسالة وأديت الأمانة ونصحت للأمة وكشف الله بك الغمة وجاهدت في الله حق جهادي حتى أتاك اليقين تركتنا على المحجة البيضاء لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ولا يندرج تحت لوائها إلا سالك فاللهم اجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته وارض اللهم عن سادتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين أما بعد إخواني وأخواتي في الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى وهو أصدق القائلين في آخر سورة الكهف بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا سورة الكهف that we read every Friday the part I want to talk about is فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه the one who is hoping to meet Allah سبحانه وتعالى he is hoping to meet his Lord عز وجل let him do uh, righteous deeds you cannot have hope in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and you are not doing your part Hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy and forgiveness, it has a number of requirements. And before asking for forgiveness and mercy, you need at least to meet these requirements. One of which is the sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. is the confidence and you are sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to respond to you. As he says in the Quran in two different chapters, in the chapter of Al-Baqarah, he says, وَإِذَا سَالَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my worshippers ask about me, say, he didn't say, say, I'm sorry, I am very close to them. In the chapter of Ghafir, he says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ and your Lord said, make dua, ask me, and I will respond to your dua. The issue of hope is something that the ummah actually needs nowadays. Because whenever you hear the news, whenever you watch or read articles about what's going on here and there, there is a lot of oppression, a lot of injustice, a lot of despair among a lot of Muslims. But in reality, there is a kind of test by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam long long time ago he gave us good news about the prevailing or the establishment of the authority of this religion on earth at the beginning of da'wah and most of you you know very well what Muslims have gone through a lot of difficulties sufferings they were tortured their money was taken from them their houses 
were replaced by other people and all of that in the middle of this very difficult situation the companions may Allah be pleased with them all they had one source for support after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their source was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam as they say kunna idha ahtamal watis nahtami Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam at the most difficult time we used to seek the help after Allah of course with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him and he says ya ayyuhan nabiyu inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadheera ولا عين إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا وبشر المؤمنين وبشر المؤمنين بأن لهم من الله فضلا كبيرا So the Prophet is warning us The Prophet is admonishing us The Prophet is a light sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is bringing us glad tidings So the companions Khabab ibn al-Arat one of the companions, he said, I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like complaining. When you have an issue, you usually contact your physician, for example, seeking help, seeking medication. Their physician was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, ala tad'u Allah lana, ala tastansir lana, won't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a kind of support? Won't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a kind of victory? We are being overpowered by the disbelievers. The disbelievers are taking control of everything. We can do nothing. We are powerless. There is no way for support. Then the Prophet sallallahu in a very powerful statement, he said, Wallahi, la yutammanna Allahu amra hadha deen walakinnakum tasta'jiroon. I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the matter of this religion, this religion one day will be prevailing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give authority to this religion to be established on earth. As he says in the chapter of An-Nur, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ so many promises are mentioned in this verse. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give authority. But the authority, power, is not given to the people who are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, there are some requirements that you need to fulfill, that you need to make. What will happen? They will be given authority on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their faith prevailing. After fear, you will have safety. After sadness, you will have joy. After difficulty, you will have prosperity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We read the chapter of Alam Nashrah many times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَىٰ إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَىٰ Always. That's your faith. That's your aqeedah. After difficulty, the prosperity, the success is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way out is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you have this faith, the Prophet is saying to the companions, but وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ you are so rush. This happened to us. We want everything to be done now. I make my dua in Jum'ah and I am expecting the answer to come before, for example, Asr prayer. That's not the right thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 is responding to us. He says in the Quran, Astajib lakum. I will answer your dua, but when? I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe after five years. Maybe after 10 years, Allah A'lam. There are so many ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to your dua. Number one, you will be given the same thing that you asked for. Or number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you from a situation, will give you something better than what you were asking for. The third, which is the best, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will postpone 
answering your dua to the akhirah. When you are in Jannah, inshallah, you will say, I wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not answer any of my dua in dunya because of the great reward you will find there when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to fulfill his promise and give you the dua. So the issue of hope again, if you look at the stories of prophets, but someone might say, Sheikh, those are prophets and they are the elite by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are ma'sumin, they are infallible, they have infallibility, isma. But their Lord is our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who answered the dua of Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the, in the belly of the whale, if you look at it, it's impossible that someone could survive. But Yunus alayhi salam survived. You know why? Because he met the requirement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and he saw the shelter of Allah azza wa jal when he said alayhi salam, he said I am going to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a place where he has never been mentioned before. Of course nobody was there in the belly of the whale except Yunus alayhi salam. And he said what? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. In the chapter of Al-Anbiya, he said, Oh Allah, there is no law but you. I have been doing injustice to myself. I have wronged myself. The, dua is, the, the, the answer is coming from Allah Azza wa Jal. Fastajabna. We answered his dua, alayhi salam. And he was out of the will by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example of hope is the mother of Musa alayhi salam. A lady. And Musa was born in a very difficult time where this dictator Pharaoh decided to get rid of all kids because he had a prophecy that someone is coming and replacing him, someone is going to take his, his authority and power. So he gave an order that all kids should be slaughtered. Musa is born in this year, at uh, this time. But the news, the support, it's coming from where? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah azza wa jal, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْزَنِي إِنَّا رَادُّهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَاعِلُهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ We revealed in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows because the mother of Musa, she is not a prophet, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe through a dream, through any way, if you feel a little bit scared about Musa, what should she do? Hide him? No. Put him in a basket, just throw him in the, in the Nile or in the river. That's the end of the story. What kind of faith, what kind of hope does this lady have? She never doubted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is not going to take care of her. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to bring Musa alayhi salam back to her. Inna raduhu ilayki wa ja'iluhu min al We are going to bring him back. To you what's extra and he's going to be a messenger by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the promise of Allah azza wa jal. and the same promise was given to Musa if you read the chapter of Shu'ara and for a second try to imagine some people they are weak powerless they had no weapons Nothing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind them. There is a very strong army equipped with all weapons, horses, everything. That this army would crush all of them in a second. And they said, because I mean, they do not have the same faith as Musa alayhi salam. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ When the two, like the, the two groups of Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh, they met they were, there, they were about to meet the followers of Musa. We are going to be caught. They are going to reach us. But firmly, that is the hope, that's the yaqeen that Musa السلام, had in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ Allah said, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to guide me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to save me. I'm going to survive. 
you are going to survive as well. That is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the glad tidings that was given to Musa. And Musa alayhi salam gave to his people alayhi salam. Wa ala nabiyina afdalu salati wa aska salam. That is what we need, brothers and sisters. We need to tell people about hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, إِذَا قَامَتِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَفِي يَدِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَسِيلَةِ فَإِنِ اسْتَطَاعَ أَنْ يَغْرِسْهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ When the day of judgment is taking place, mountains are demolished and the, the sky is falling down and, and huge, something that you can never imagine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he described this day and he said, وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَى وَلَاهُمْ بِسُكَارَى وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ You see people are like swing right and left and they are like if they are drunk. But in reality they are not because of the, 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 the severity or the, the hardship of this day. You will see them like, the, what should I do in this day? And you are seeing the world is coming to an end. You have a small plant. What should I do? Plant it. Oh, subhanAllah. The world is coming to an end. No more life. You still give hope to people. Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with, with him, one day he was planting olive tree. And olive trees, they take a long time, maybe 10 years, Allah Allah, maybe more, to give a kind of olives in a way. So they said to him, come on, you are planting the olive tree that takes long, long time. So we can have olives. Why should he do that? He said, our ancestors, our great grandfathers, they planted the olive trees. So now we have the olive and we do this for future generations so they can enjoy the same thing. So whatever you are doing now, it will be reflected on the future generations. Whatever kind of hope, يَقُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَعْبِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الصَّحِيحِ يَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا وَبَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا Make things easy to people and don't make things difficult. Talk to them about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk to them about the forgiveness of Allah azza wa jal. Talk to them about the hope that we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا Always give glad tidings. Always do positivity. Be positive. And let people always be positive. That's if you want to enjoy your life and make sure whatever happens to you, if you are tested by Allah Azza wa if something unpleasant happened to you, a kind of death, a kind of, God forbid, calamity, anything, you fail something, your project fail for some time, make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you. The compensation is coming from Allah Azza wa Jal. The prizes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala are always there. He says, "Sa'inna Allah wasbir, fa'inna Allah la yudir ajr al muhsinin." Be patient, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will never let your efforts down. He says in the chapter of Al Kaf again that we read every Friday, "Inna al-ladina amanu wa amilu al-salihat." What will happen? As for those who believe and again met the requirements and they follow their faith with righteous deeds we will never let them down. The one who is hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is doing righteous things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always support him. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونشهد أنه لا إله إلا هو ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا وحبيبنا المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our key. Hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, victory and support is the only thing which is left in this life. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of the oppression, that's being done to different parts of the world, to our brothers and sisters. Always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember the promise of Allah azza wa jal. Wallahu mutimmu nurihi walaw karihal kafirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light 
means the religion, the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be completed, will be prevailing one day, even if it is against the wish of the disbelievers. Because again, that is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are always true. وَعْدَ اللَّهِ لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who never breaks his promise Azza wa Jal. So I need all of us to work hard and always be optimistic. Always be hopeful as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In most difficult times, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would try his best to make the companions have a kind of hope and have a kind of joy and have a kind of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In different battles and in different situations, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always there to inspire, to give the companions this feeling of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to have the same as Allah azza wa jal. He says in the Quran, in the chapter of the Safat, فَمَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ What do you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you think that He will forgive you? Yes. Do you think that His mercy will cover you? Yes. Do you think that He will accept you? Yes. I'm 100% sure of the uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He says in the Qudsi hadith, Ana I am at the good thinking of my worshipper. If you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your business successful, He will. If you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you getting your degree, He will. If you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you pious children, He will. Anything you think and you are 100% sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to fulfill it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill it and will make it easy for you because he says in the Quran وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيزِ This is not something difficult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would change the whole world within less than a second before your eye blinks he says in the Quran إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْهًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُمْ فَيَكُونَ The command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wants something, he just gives the order. It says, be and it is done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the situation of the ummah to a better situation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi hadha al-yum al-azim. أن يغفر لي ولكم اللهم لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم العظيم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا محتاج إلا عطيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا ولا آخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا ورحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اهدي أبنائنا وبناتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل مداة مهديين لا ضالين ولا مضلين اللهم ارزقهم الصحبة الصالحة بين قلوبنا اللهم املا قلوبنا بحبك وحب نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والله ask you in this day to make this community and to make the muslim umma united and very strong to unite our, our hearts together our hearts on loving you and loving your prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم والله we ask you to guide our sons and our daughters to grant them the best of success to make them guided and make them as guides for others. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Aqulu qawl hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa aqim al-salah. Inna salata kanat ala al-muntaba mawquta aqim al-salah. Allah
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى واسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون واتبعوا أحسن ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم من قبل أن يأتيكم من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب بغتة وأنتم لا تشعرون أن تقول نفس يا حسرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله يا حسرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله وإن كنت لمن الساخرين أو تقول لو أن الله هداني لكنت من المتقين أو تقول حين ترى العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين فلا قد جاءتك آياتي فكذبت بها فكذبت بها واستكبرت وكنت من الكافرين الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم شراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا لم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullah. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I would like to introduce the new Imam. Jazakallah khair for coming, uh, Sheikh. Uh, Mahmoud Hassanin, he's from Little Rock, Arkansas. He was an imam there for six years, mashallah. And he's visiting us as an imam candidate today. So again, may Allah reward him for coming over. Mashallah, he's a very distinguished imam. He has the Quran memorized by 10 years old. The entire Quran Hafiz, mashallah. So it's very cool. He has his bachelor's degree um, from Al Azhar University, which he studied in English. Mashallah, he did his PhD in Durham in England with Islamic studies, Middle Eastern Islamic studies. He's also done a lot of work with the interfaith community and is a very distinguished sheikh, mashallah. So please accept him and welcome him. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. 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 Thank you.